if I look at the next one here, uh, I'm going to approach it the same way. So I start off, I build a bridge. 3 times a negative 4 is a negative 12. And I need two numbers that multiply to a negative 12 but add to a positive 11, which would be a positive 12 and a negative 1. Again, they multiply to a negative 12, but they add to a positive 11. So I'm going to use those to split up this middle term so that that 12x is the same thing as, or sorry, that 11x is the same thing as a 12x minus 1x. Okay? So then everything else just kind of tags along for the ride. And what happens here is now instead of having three terms, I have four terms, which allows me to put them in groups of two. So I do my factoring by grouping. And again, I include this sign that's right here that in front of that negative 1. Out of the first group, I can factor out a 3x. So I factor out the 3x. When I divide that out, it leaves me with an x and a plus 4. Out of the second group, I have to factor something out. And since I see that negative in front of my first term there, I'm going to try factoring it a negative 1, which leaves me with a positive x and a positive 4 when I divide it out. And now I see that common polynomial again of the x plus 4. So my two factors are going to be the x plus 4. And if I take those away, it leaves me with the 3x and the minus 1. So my other factor is the 3x minus 1. Okay? Again, it doesn't matter what order you put the two binomials in. But that's factoring trinomials. We're using factoring by grouping. Okay? If I look at the next one, I build a bridge. Uh, 7 times 3 is a 21, a positive 21. So two numbers that multiply to a positive 21 but add to a negative 10. And, you know, you might not be able to come up with these as quickly as I can. Uh, this is going to be a negative 7 and a negative 3. Uh, but the more practice you have, the better you get at it. And right here, a negative 7 times a negative 3 is a positive 21, negative times a negative. But a negative 7 plus negative 3 is a negative 10x. So once again, I split up that middle term. So that negative 10x, I'm going to rewrite as a negative 7x minus 3x. Because that's the same thing as a, uh, a negative 10x. Everything else just tags along for the ride. And now I've got four terms I factor by grouping. So I group the first two, I group the second two. Out of the first two terms, I can factor out a 7x, which leaves me with an x and a minus 1. Out of the second two terms, again, I see that negative in front of that first term, so I'm going to try factoring a negative 3. And when I do that, it leaves me with a positive x and a minus 1. And now once again, I see that common factor, that common polynomial factor of the x minus 1. And if I were to remove the x minus 1, it leaves me with the 7x and the minus 3 for my other factor. Okay? Doing a couple more just to, to, to keep this, this rhythm and to, to keep it fresh for us. I build a bridge. That's a negative 30. Again, always including those signs. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 30 but add to a negative 13 would be a negative 15 and a positive 2. So now I split up that middle term. That's going to be a negative 15x and a plus 2x. And it also doesn't matter what order I write these in. I could write this as 2x minus 15x, and that would be fine as well. Okay? That will give me the same result uh, as writing the minus 15x and the plus 2. All right. It doesn't matter whichever way you want to write it. Uh, just whichever way I wrote it off to the side, it tends to be the way I write it. So this one, I'll do the negative 15x and the plus 2. Uh, it doesn't matter either way. The 5x squared and the minus 6 tag along for the ride. And now I do my factoring by grouping. Out of the first group, I can factor out a 5x, which leaves me with an x minus 3. Out of the second group, I can factor out a positive 2, which leaves me with an x minus 3. And now I see that, that polynomial factor, x minus 3. And if I were to take that away, it leaves me with a 5x plus 2. And uh, those two numbers, the negative 15 and 2, those are the only two numbers that will satisfy that condition. A lot of people will try to think of something like uh, the 3 and the 10. But if you do a negative 3 and a negative 10, it doesn't multiply to a negative 30. Okay, so there's only two numbers in existence that will multiply to that uh, number uh, but add to the middle coefficient. All right? Same thing here. I build a bridge. Uh, that's a negative 24. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 24 but add to a positive 5 are going to be a positive 8 and a negative 3. So I split up that middle term. Again, it doesn't matter what order I put these in. That's a negative 2x squared. Oh, sorry, let me split up the middle term first. 
That's an 8x and a minus 3x. Same thing as a 5x. Everything else tags along for the ride. And now I just group them. So I do my factoring by grouping. Out of the first group, I can factor out a negative 2x, which leaves me with an x and a minus 4. And again, I factored out a negative because the first term had a negative in it. Uh, the second group, I can factor out a negative 3, which leaves me with an x and a minus 4. So once again, I see that x minus 4. So one of my factors is the x minus 4. The other factor is the negative 2x minus 3. A couple more examples here. Uh, for this one, uh, these two are each a little bit tricky uh, because as we look at them, I could build a bridge here and uh, start factoring. In fact, I'll do it that way and then I'll do it again. If I build a bridge here, that's a negative 16. I'm going to write it off to the side over here. And uh, two numbers that multiply to a negative 16 but add to a 4 are, are going to be, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, that's a negative 32. It's going to be awfully hard to come up with those two numbers. A negative 32, uh, and those two numbers are a positive 8 and a negative 4. And if I split up that middle term, I'm going to write it off to the side over here. Let's say 2x squared plus 8x minus 4x minus 16. I can do my factoring by grouping. And uh, out of the first group, I can factor out a 2x, leaves me with an x plus 4. Out of the second group, I can factor out a minus 4, which leaves me with an x plus 4. So I see the, the factors of x plus 4 and a 2x minus 4. But that is incorrect. All right? And the reason it's incorrect is because this second group still has a greatest common factor. I can factor a 2 out of that group, which would leave me with an x minus 2. Again, it doesn't affect that x plus 4, but it still has to be factored out. And really, when you look at the original problem, I'm going to do this a second time, it has a 2 in common to start. So if I factor the 2 out initially, it leaves me with an x squared plus 2x minus 8. Always look for a greatest common factor first. Now, inside the parentheses, I'm going to factor this trinomial. I build a bridge. That's a negative 8. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 8 but add to a positive 2 are a 4 and a negative 2. And then I can split up my middle term. Again, this 2 just kind of tags along for the ride. But if I split up that middle term into the 4x and the minus 2x, everything else tags along for the ride. And now I can do my factoring by grouping. Okay, And it doesn't seem like much of a benefit here. Uh, but in the long run, factoring out the greatest common factor will make things much, much easier. Out of the first group, I can factor out the x. That's an x plus 4. Out of the second group, uh, a negative 2. Uh, that leaves me with an x plus 4. And now I can see the factors starting to form. Uh, again, this 2 tags along for the ride. The x plus 4 gets pulled out. And when I pull out that x plus 4, it leaves me with the x minus 2. So you see that I, I still arrive at the same answer. But it's going to end up being easier, especially when we start looking at some of the shortcuts we can take uh, if we factor out the greatest common factor first. Okay? So if we apply that to the, this next one, this has a greatest common factor. Uh, they're all divisible by 2, so I'm going to factor out the 2 first, which is going to leave me with a 3x squared. Uh, let me give myself a little bit more space here. It's going to leave me with a 3x squared, a minus 5x, and a minus 2. And now I'm going to build a bridge. I do the 3 times the negative 2. That's a negative 6. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 6 that add to a negative 5 are going to be a negative 6 and a positive 1. And so now I can split up that middle term. I'm going to split that middle term up into the negative 6x and the plus 1x. Again, everything else just kind of tags along for the ride, including that 2 uh, that's kind of on the outside. So I've got a 3x squared. I've got a minus 2 here. Now I can do my factoring by grouping. I group the first two terms. I group the second two terms. Out of those first two terms, I can factor out a 3x, uh, which leaves me with an x and a minus 2. Out of the second two terms, I have to factor something out. It's going to be a plus 1 this time. It leaves me with an x minus 2. And now I can see the factors starting to form. Okay, That 2 that was on the outside, the x minus 2 that... Uh, uh, we have in common here, and then what's left, which is the 3x and the plus 1. This is factored completely. 
I do not like that plus sign. Let me fix it. Okay? And that's it. That's factoring trinomials. We build a bridge. We uh, come up with two numbers that multiply to the bridge but add to the middle coefficient. Split up that middle term and do factoring by grouping. Okay?